And these folks have been ready in the tailgate, tailgate lots from early, early this morning. Yeah, they were, and there's nothing like opening weekend. There really is. And you've been practicing against your same team over and over. You get sick of seeing the same guys. You really just want to hit somebody else from an opposing team. These guys are amped up here today. Idaho did win the toss, and the visitors from Moscow, Idaho, have elected to receive. Seeing it up for the first time as a Nittany Lion is Jordan Stout, the Virginia Tech transfer, and he will handle the kickoff duties and the long field goals for James Franklin's squad. As Idaho gets set to return it, Nick Romano, one of the running backs, back in the end zone. What a crowd and an atmosphere that rivals any in college football. Stout approaches, and the 2019 season for the Penn State Nittany Lions is underway with a boot out of the end zone for a touchback. Well, we talked about that Penn State defense. Here's the man that's going to try to put up some points against them, Mason Petrino, the son of Coach Paul Petrino in his senior season. Yeah, and he's a guy that can move a little bit in the pocket. When you watch tape on Mason Petrino, he can escape with his legs, which he might need to do against this fierce defensive line from Penn State. He will start. We will also see Colton Richardson. They're going to split a lot of the time as quarterback for Idaho in this game. Petrino lobs it over the middle, incomplete. And a big hit as Garrett Taylor came in, and we got a flag on the first play. And it looks like it's going to be a penalty on the Penn State safety. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number 17. The play is under further review. So right off the bat, James, a targeting flag. Yeah, and what Idaho was trying to do here is they're running a fake draw, and they ended up trying to do a lofty pass to one of the fullbacks. And when you come down, you're trying to strike a guy getting a reception, you have to watch where you're leading with your helmet. And that's got to be a blow to Garrett Taylor. Well, it looked like Taylor was trying to get out of the way, but Romano, the intended receiver, came in and lowered himself, and the collision just looked very awkward. Well, first play, and we get to welcome in our rules expert, Dean Blandino. Dean, your thoughts on this call? So remember, big change this year with targeting as it pertains to the replay review. Now the replay official has to confirm all elements of targeting for the penalty to be enforced. You look at it, the receiver is in a defenseless posture. The defender leads with the shoulder. Looked like he was trying to turn his head, but there was forcible contact to the head neck area. So again, replay official is reofficiating the play, and if they can't confirm all elements, they can overturn the call. So Dean, that means this year, there is no more of them coming back and saying that the call stands, correct? Correct, we, we will not hear stands. We will hear either confirmed or overturned. All right, Dean, thank you very much. Let's see what they rule here as we get several more looks at this play. And I mean, you can see Garrett Taylor trying to turn After his body. After review, there is no foul for targeting. Second down. And there you go. They could not confirm all of those elements, and Taylor stays in the game. And I love that. I love that new rule change this year on the targeting rule. You could tell Garrett Taylor was assuming that with those arms extended by Romano that he was going to be able to hit him in the stomach or in the chest area. You can't control what that receiver is going to do. Good job by the referees. And there's the language that Dean Blandino was explaining. Not only is there no targeting, there is no penalty. So it is second down and 10. Petrino fires a fastball complete right around the 30. It'll be a gain of five. It'll bring up third and five. As the reception was made by Cottrell Haywood, one of the two stud wideouts for Idaho. And this has to be the game plan for Idaho. Get the ball out of your hand fast. You see the no-backs uh, set there. 
trying to get the ball out quickly on some three-step stuff that negates the pass rush that Penn State has third and five. But watch out for Haywood who just caught the ball and then the other guy to watch out wide is number 88 Jeff Cotton for the Vandals. Those are their top two guys. Petrino's going to try to run it and he doesn't get there. He's a yard short. Jan Johnson middle linebacker with a stop. Is Idaho going to think about going for this? You think you'd have to. You're here. You're trying to have a big upset on a Big Ten team in front of the largest crowd you've ever played in front of as a school. You think, why not be aggressive? They've got the offense out there. Auto owners insurance impact players. Well, you got Noah Johnson. If you think they're going to run the football, it's got to be behind their all big sky right guard. They do hand it off, run that way, but they're stuffed. And Penn State gets the stop. Well, you see right here, they got no push on the Penn State defensive line right on the interior. When you're trying to run up the gut against Robert Windsor and Antonio Shelton, you're not going to have much success. Those guys get lower than the Idaho offensive line. Turnover on downs. That vaunted Penn State defense that carried them so often last year does it again here to start 2019. Ricky Slade in the backfield. First throw for Clifford as a starter, and he completes it. Justin Shorter, the red shirt freshman, picking up the first down, a gain of 11. So Sean Clifford named the starter eight days ago officially, takes over for Trace McSorley, who rewrote the record books, but now it's Clifford's show. He hands it off. That's the explosive K.J. Hamler all the way down inside the 10. And you see the tempo right now by the Nittany Lions and Ricky Ronnie. We asked him, how do you get K.J. Hamler a ball? You got to find creative ways. Every single D coordinator is going to target him. You saw one right there on the jet sweep. Nice job there out of Ricky Ronnie. Pickup of 16. Inside give. And it's Clifford with the keep. He faked the give to Slade. And he takes it down a couple of yards from the goal line. Second and goal. This time another fake pass deflected. Got a hand on it, went up the ladder. Tyrese Denman, the strong safety, almost had an interception. Yeah, receiver had him beat in the slot. Sean Clifford saw it, tried to get the ball out quick. My old D coordinator, Greg Williams, used to say to us, when you are not a pass rusher, when the ball's being thrown, you turn into a pass defender. Nice job there by Denman to get his hands up. 6-1, and he needed every inch of it to block that pass. Now third and goal. A fumble, but diving right on top of it was Sean Clifford after an awkward potential exchange with Ricky Slade, and now it's fourth down, and the field goal unit comes on. Clifford's fortunate to get back on this football, and that's not what you want to see down in the low red zone. They went backwards through three plays. You don't want to see that. Fortunate to get back on it, you still have a chance for points. But those are things you got to work out. That zone read type stuff it gets a little tricky sometimes on the handoff. So Pinniger, the sophomore who started last year as a freshman and was 16 to 24 on field goals, has a chance here from 28. And he knocks it right through, and Penn State draws first blood. 3-0 Penn State, three and a half gone by in the opening quarter. Tried to go for it on their own side of the field, didn't get it, but I think they've got to be pleased with holding Penn State to three. Oh, absolutely. That's a sudden change situation. The defense holds up. We heard about Jordan Stout's big leg on kickoffs, and he has shown it so far. Both of them through the back of the end zone. So we take a look at our
our Auto Owners Insurance Impact players, James. Well, I mentioned first team all big sky Noah Johnson. He's the guy that could be playing on Sunday. You mentioned wide receiver Jeff Cotton. If they're going to have a chance to pull the upset, he has to make some big catches. And then Utah Gross Matos, just an absolute machine on the D line, a future first round pick. We talked about Micah Parsons in the open, a guy that's truly gifted athletically. Last year was his first year playing linebacker. What's he do? Leads the team with only one start. Yeah, that's incredible. Led the team in tackles and started just the one game. A little pistol look here to start the second drive for the Vandals. And nothing doing there. Tackled right around the line of scrimmage. P.J. Mustafer and company coming up for the stop. We were talking to the defensive coordinator, Brent Pry. He said that there are certain guys that they labeled in spring. I said, we need them to turn a corner. And the first name he came up with was P.J. Mustafer. He said that he had a great spring, did a tremendous job through summer and fall camp. And you see him getting some playing time. They need him to play big this season. Well, they really praise that defensive line. But they're good at every spot on that defense. Inside handoff and just again, nothing there. Carter trying to find some space, but he had none. And Brent Price said that they like to blitz 40% of the time on early downs, first and second down. That's what they did there with Jan Johnson. This is the situations you want to avoid if you're Idaho. A third and 10 does not suit you well. Your offensive line, even though it's a strength of their offense, it's undermatched against a really talented Penn State defensive line. You want to give your quarterback short throws on third and short, short and mediums. Third and 10 is where you want to avoid if you're Idaho. Mason Petrino, the senior quarterback, the coach's son, gonna have to go to the air here. Here comes pressure. Down it goes. Back around the 15. Yitor Gross Matos, who you just talked about, James, coming in and doing his thing. And what they do is they line him up on the inside here. Look at working one on one with the guard. Makes the guard whiff, gets to the quarterback. That's the advantage when you have a defensive end that's 6'5", 264. You get third and 10, you can get all your DNs on the field, all that speed, and he's able to do that to a guard in space. Gross Matos is a low snap, but nicely taken by Kate Coffey. And a bad punt. That was just bad from the start for Idaho, and Penn State's going to have really good field position. So the 35-yard line is where Penn State will start as that goes for just an 18-yard punt. Kate Coffey's an All-American, but once that snap hits the ground in front of him, it was trouble. Yeah, once it skips off the turf, I know that throws their rhythm off when you're a punter. you got to be able to catch it in stride. You want to have a certain rhythm to your kicks. That threw them off because he usually, like you said, he's a very talented punter for the Vandals. So both Penn State drives today have started in enemy territory. Fake the slay. Clifford over the middle. Over the head of the intended target, his talented sophomore tight end, Pat Fryermuth. There was nobody around him in a white jersey to defend this ball. Sometimes when they're that wide open, you kind of panic and overthrow it. Just outside the reach of Fryermuth, who's 6'5". He's tall, but not that tall. Inside give and nothing doing that time for Ricky Slade. So third and ten coming up for Penn State. And if you're Idaho, you're saying to yourself, this is another sudden change situation. We've started as a defense inside our own 35 twice in a row. If we can hold them here, that's two wins. Sudden change wins for us. Big third down early in this game for Penn State. Pocket collapses and a quick throw wide of Daniel George. Fourth down and 10 and you're kind of in no man's land here. It would be about a 52 53 yard field goal and they will try it. Now James Franklin told us inside of 50 yards our normal kicker Jake Pinnaker will try the field goals but if it's beyond 50 it will be Jordan Stout the Virginia Tech transfer and that's what we have here. Jordan Stout will attempt it from 53.
Can he showcase that big leg? Yes. That's why they use Jordan Stout at 50 plus as he knocks it home from 53 to give Penn State a 6 nothing lead with 8.35 left in the first quarter. Big football family. He was telling a cool story to us about how he talks with Mason all the time. They don't really talk about anything else but football, it seems like. You can tell that football runs through the veins of all the Petrinos. Yeah, his son Mason got the first two drives at quarterback. At some point, we will see Colton Richardson. As they told us that they're going to split time here today. The ball was caught. Fair catch inside the 25-yard line. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 25-yard line, first and 10. And that 53-yarder that was just hit by Jordan Stout, longest since 2013 for a Penn State kicker. And they are happy to have him here as a transfer from Virginia Tech. So it's still Mason Petrino. He will get the first three drives in this game at quarterback. Clean pocket that time. High throw and it's caught. Connor Whitney, really nice grab on the sideline by the tight end. And they're going to say incomplete. He was out of bounds, second and 10. Nice job trying to go up and extend for it. By Whitney, as that left foot comes down out of bounds. He tried to tap the toe, but the heel was down on the white. But you see, Brandon, the new strategy for Idaho. They're going no back. They're trying to negate that pass rush of Penn State, get quick, easy rhythm throws for Mason Petrino. Scrambling. Now he's in trouble. Look out. And Penn State, for the second time today, takes down Mason Petrino. This time it's Jason Owe, the redshirt freshman, who they are really excited about. Yeah, that strategy only works to go on no back if you get rid of the football. If you hold on to it, you only have five guys blocking this intense rush. And Owe is a workout warrior, a guy that runs 4-3-3 in the 40-yard dash. He's only played three years of football. And Penn State's strength coach compares him athletically to Vernon Davis, the guy they were with at Maryland. I played against Vernon Davis. He's an absolute freak. Yeah, the Penn State players called Owe a prototype. They think he's up for a breakout year. Nice play there, and now trying to run it on third and a country mile. Idaho will get to the 30, but that'll bring up fourth and five. But you did say it during the break. If Idaho's going to have success here early, they need to try to empty out the backfield. They tried it a couple of plays, but to no avail. Well, it's just so far running the football hasn't worked in the traditional longer routes. Mason Petrino's not going to have the time he normally has playing in the Big Sky Conference. So you figure it's go no back, quick throws, negate the pass rush. First charge timeout, Penn State. And Penn State burns a timeout here with 7-11 remaining in the opening quarter. We'll step aside and be right back from that pocket. Penn State defense has been smothering him so far here in the first quarter. So after a three and out, Cade Coffey with a low punt, and that hit off the back. By John Reed for Penn State that that hit, but the Nittany Lions jump on it. So not a great start for the All-American punter, Cade Coffey. BTN to go users, the Fox Sports app is now the exclusive place to stream Big Ten events from BTN, Fox, and FS1. Download the Fox Sports app today on your smartphone, tablet, and connected devices. Never miss a second of the action. First time today that Penn State has snapped the football in their own territory as they start this drive out at the 46. Easy pitch and catch over the middle. First down into the hands of Justin Shorter. And this is a welcome sight for Nittany Lion fans as drops were an issue last year and in the spring game. Justin Shorter so far with two receptions. Former number one ranked recruit at wide receiver in 2018 class. Now they'll turn to the ground. Journey Brown. 
One of the four tailbacks that we highlighted in our open for James Franklin. Let's take a look at the auto owners insurance impact players on this side of the football. Yeah, well, KJ Hamler, the freshman All-American, we've already talked about him, extremely talented, extremely explosive. Pat Fryermuth, just going to get better, was second among tight ends in touchdown receptions last year. Trey Walker, the starting Mike linebacker for Idaho, talented player. Clifford, nowhere to go. Escapes the pocket. He's going to tuck it and step out right around the first down marker. And it looks like he's got enough to pick it up. And these are the plays I was most interested in seeing today from Penn State. We all know who he's replacing in Trace McSorley. And these are the things that Trace did really well. He doesn't have to beat Trace, but can he improv when things break down, when there's no one open? Can he scramble and pick up yardage, extend the downs, extend the chains, move them? He did so right there. Well, that's what the fan base was talking about in the offseason. Yeah, he's got the big arm, but can he use those legs? And he's confident, he said, in using those legs. He showed it right there for a pickup of seven. the right side trying to stretch his body forward and he gets it to the 23. Does the playbook change at all with Sean Clifford this year versus Trace McSorley? I don't think it does. You meant you heard James Franklin talk over the offseason about how athletic he's become. He's worked really hard to be a better runner. I think you got to run the same stuff. You got to be who you are. Speaking of running right up the middle and right into the end zone goes Journey Brown. See him right here, cut right off the back hip of Rasheed Walker, and there's no one there at the second level. James Franklin talked about his speed. He's the fastest of the tailbacks, and once he gets to that second and third level, you're not catching Journey Brown. Ricky Ronnie said, we want explosive runs of 15 yards or more. We'll put that in the category. 23 up the middle to the house, 13-0, Nittany Lions. Sean Clifford's going to keep the football, gives it to Journey Brown. Look at this. Wide open through the middle of the defense. That's a touchdown. You asked about the identity and whether things will change with Trace McSorley not here anymore and Sean Clifford. Well, the answer right there is no. That is exactly who they are. That's part of their offensive identity. Ricky Ronnie dialing up the same plays for a touchdown. Journey Brown, second touchdown of that young sophomore's career. So 13 to nothing. A little over five minutes left in the first quarter, and Idaho's got to get their offense on track. They've only run 10 plays, no first downs, and they haven't crossed their own 35 yard line. Antonio Shelton if they're going to be able to run the ball at all. No, and Antonio Shelton gets upfield right away when teams run the zone stuff. You got to get penetration. That's exactly what Antonio Shelton does. He gets vertical. Makes a nice tackle. You cannot live in second and long against this Penn State defense. Loss of four. Once again, Petrino running for his life. He's had to flip it upfield. John Reed, the corner, was coming in hot on the Vandals quarterback. There's no foul for intentional grounding. The passer was outside the tackle box. Third down. No grounding penalty. Well, John Reed on the top of your screen comes on the blitz. Brent Pry dials it up, and there's no one to account for him. Mason Petrino tries to scramble, realizes there's a guy in his face, has to throw it away. Nice pressure dialed up by Brent Pry. A 
referee Tom Stapleton. Very late flag from Tom Stapleton. And will we get an announcement from Tom Stapleton? Intentional grounding, offense number eight. Ball did not reach the line of scrimmage. Spot foul, loss of down, third down. Well, we were waiting for it. That was the question in a disastrous penalty for Idaho. Dean, back in the studio. It looks like the right call, correct? Because intentional grounding is really a two-part foul. Referee has the quarterback out of the pocket, and then the official downfield will determine whether the ball made ball it to the line of scrimmage. Offense number 74. And now a false and start. Third down. So everything going sideways for the Vandals. Well, you know that's the loudest part of the stadium back there where the student section is. It's going to be loud. There's not many plays in the playbook right here for third and forever. Third and 32 officially. Look for a quick pass or some kind of quarterback draw. Petrino with a student screaming right at his back. It is a quick throw. Michael Noyle hauls it in just to get a little further away from the shadow of their own goal post. And they will punt on fourth down. That's really the only option for Idaho there. You want to make sure that you said you get away from your own goal line. You don't want a punt blocked for a touchdown or a safety. Give your punter a little breathing room. Kate Coffey, again a low punt. Pressure was coming off the side of his foot, out of bounds, and yet again, Penn State is going to have fantastic field position. Just a 23-yard punt. Later tonight on BTN, Shea Patterson, Donovan Peoples-Jones, they lead the talented seventh-ranked Wolverines against Middle Tennessee State under the lights at the big house. Presented by Taco Bell here on BTN, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. This time a home opener for Michigan has been under the lights. Can catch it tonight right here. Clifford does hand it off around the edge. Ricky Slade fighting for a couple. The best part about that game tonight is that our buddy Matt Millen is back in the booth. Boy, after all he went through, what a fighter. Honored to have him back tonight on the call with Kevin Kugler. Pressure coming. Clifford dumps it over the middle to Slade. All the way down inside the 10. That was well executed. It was. It was a simple little angle route out of the backfield. Slade, there was nobody in the middle of the defense for Idaho. Easy throw and catch, and now you're in the low red zone. Got to capitalize. 26-yard gain that time. Slipping through, Ricky Slade can't quite find the end zone. And Saquon Barkley, then Miles Sanders. Oh, it's off to Slade and Brown, who have gotten the carries here early. Line there, and that'll bring up third down. And a really nice job by the Vandal linebackers filling in the middle of that defense, keeping Slade out of the end zone. His fellow sophomore, Journey Brown, had the touchdown run earlier. Will they go back to Slade here and get him one? 
They do give it to him, and he is indeed in the end zone for a touchdown. Ricky Slade from a yard out. here on the inside of the defense, the push by the offensive line. Ricky Slay, whenever you're able to run in the end zone without being touched, that's a good executed play by the Nittany Lion offensive line. So both sophomore tailbacks have hit the end zone for James Franklin. First it was Journey Brown, that time Ricky Slay to make it 20 to nothing. And let's take a look at this message from Nationwide. All right, Brad, once again, I have revolutionized the songwriting process. Uh, here we go. I know I can't play an instrument, but this, this is my forte. Obviously, for auto insurance, we've got the wheel route. Obviously. Retirement, we're going with a long-term play. Makes sense. Pet insurance. Wait, let me guess. Flea flicker. Yes. How'd you know? I'm studying my playbook. Yeah, actually. Ricky Slade with a touchdown run. You know, we thought that we would see both Brown and Slade get a number of carries, and that's been the case so far. Yeah, and really it was Ricky Slade the entire drive. You talk about the angle route that got them down in position in the low red zone. And then three straight gives to him to get him into the end zone. He wants to be that next 1,000-yard rusher here. And when you have a stable of running backs going to a season, and Penn State thinks they have four, and they think there's not that deep of a gap from one to four, He's trying to make his case to try to hog some more of those carries. Yeah, those are the two freshmen, Slade and Brown, and then, as you mentioned, Kane and Ford, those young freshmen. Well, they're all young in the backfield for Penn State, but they're all talented. Still no sign of the other quarterback, Colton Richardson. It's been all Mason Petrino, but he just hasn't had much time to do anything in that backfield. Quick throw, and that's the first time they've been able to get it to Jeff Cotton, their most talented playmaker. Had a quick catch and throw by Mason Petrino. We mentioned Jeff Cotton, if they're going to have a chance to move the ball and try to get some rhythm offensively, you'd expect them to look for number 88. Pretty much all of camp, they had him in a yellow no-contact jersey. They didn't want to risk injury. Second and six, he airmailed that way above the head of Jeff Cock. So again, you're sitting here at third and six. Just under the third long range, we used to consider that third and seven plus. But not a situation you want to be in if you're Idaho. When you have the pass rush ability that Penn State has. Still no first downs for Idaho in this game. And we're getting a timeout by the Vandals. 30 second charge timeout, Idaho. They step Their aside, first. we step aside for 30 seconds. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire, but my agent was there before the flames were out. He said together, we're going to rebuild. We've got 25 employees who depended on it. And that's all that mattered to me. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. Incredible. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Six figures packed into Beaver Stadium on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Penn State enjoying a 20 to nothing lead. 
Idaho coming up here third and six, and we'll see if they can get their first first down of the game. Petrino stepping up underneath to Haywood. He's not going to get there. A little short and fourth down coming up. First drive of the game in this situation, they went for it, but it looks like here they're going to opt to punt. Brent Prize crew does it again. Well, they decide to play coverage here, and really it was a nice job by Jonathan Sutherland driving on the football, using the sideline as his friend coming inside out, securing the tackle, forcing the fourth down. Low bouncing punt from Coffey, the explosive KJ Hamler. Look out! Another drive that will start across the 50. We haven't seen him in the passing game, but boy, number one is fun. He tries to cut back, and you see him slip there, somehow able to keep his feet, because he's a tremendous athlete. But so far, it looks like Cade Coffey, who has some accolades as a punter, hasn't gotten into a rhythm so far today. The first one, you said, okay, they'll skip to him. But since then, most of them have been short line drives. And it really hasn't helped out the field position battle at all. 38-yard punt there, but a 25-yard return by Hamler. Clifford dumping it underneath. So again, getting the ball to Hamler in different ways as a flag comes in here at the end of the play. It's going to be against Penn State. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 88. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. That's against the wide receiver Dan Chisena. So look at where KJ Hamler is. We mentioned Ricky Ronnie trying to find ways to get on the ball. Look at this hurdle just to try to get the football. I know it's a negative play. But you see the creativity that Ricky Ronnie is trying to stay up and figure out how to get him the football. And there's the block in the back by number 88, Dan Chasina, at the end of that play. And that will wind us down to the end of the first quarter. The first quarter that Penn State dominated. It's 20 to nothing after 15 minutes. Into this, well, Penn State crowd, he's participating. And Elise Miniker will be at that concert tonight in Hershey if she gets out of here in time. Sean Clifford slipping up the middle across the 50. So getting back to the original line of scrimmage. You get to see some of the athleticism of Sean Clifford. Quarterback draw, something that Penn State's known for, especially behind the chains. Still doing it with Sean Clifford. That's a couple of nice runs for him in this game, and now we've got a flag. Both sides pointing at the other. Ball start, offense number 69. Five yard penalty, second down. That's the right guard, CJ Thorpe. And there was a battle at that guard position through camp. CJ was on the D line last year in 2018. Comes back over, wins the starting right guard job. Brings a demeanor that James Franklin said they need kind of a nastiness, a griminess to him. A little too anxious that time. Yeah, and he meant that in a good way. Yep. Not getting in fights. He's just a very physical, aggressive player. Good throw by Clifford. Cam Sullivan Brown with his first catch of the season. 14-yard pickup. So that'll make it third and one. Three, seven, 
Clifford, four of seven, throwing it. This time he hands it off. And coming up to make a nice play, Trey Walker, middle linebacker. So that's going to make it fourth down for Penn State. What a play by Trey Walker. He sees it, diagnoses the simple zone, and he shot this gap to make a nice tackle for loss. They said if they're going to be good on defense, he has to be the leader. He was the leader there to drop Penn State back a yard. So the Nittany Lions going for it. Incomplete turnover on downs intended for Mac Hippenhammer, the two-sport athlete who plays baseball, and James Franklin is frustrated with his offense. We step aside, 20 nothing. Nittany Lions tugging while the ball is in the air. Tough to see there. Six year for James Franklin. What a job he's done. Seven wins the first two seasons, then those two 11 win seasons, and last year nine and four. And there is the new quarterback, Colton Richardson, as he subs in for Mason Petrino. He is a big boy, 6'4, 285. And he's taken down. Matos. Yeah, you tore across Matos, top of your screen. They don't block him. If you're going to block somebody, on the Penn State defensive line, that'd be the guy to block. So far, his two sacks have come on a one-on-one -on -one rush on a guard and unblocked. If you're Idaho, you would think you'd have a guy out there to help chip him. Don't let him go without seeing a body. Los Matos led the team with eight sacks last year. As you mentioned, a couple here to start off the 2019 season. And now a flag. I'll start offense number 54. Second down. Let's go down to Elise. I'm joined by former Penn State quarterback Matt McGloin. Matt, you said you want to be out there. You're doing radio sidelines, so he's snagging for it quickly. You know what it's like to compete for the starting job. You know what it's like to start in this environment. Explain what Sean Clifford could be going through. Well, that's something I experienced, as you said, when I made my first start many years ago. But what he needs to understand is that, listen, you're coming in here. All you need to do is prove it to yourself. Prove that you're capable of being a leader. Prove you can generate points. Prove that you can win games. You already have the support from these fans, the support from the coaching staff, and the support from your teammates. So I think he just needs to settle down a little bit. How would you evaluate how he's doing in that right now? Um, well, they started a few times in great field position. I think he's looking for completions. I think he's doing a great job of it. You know, I do think at times his nerves are getting the best of him. But as the game goes on, I think we'll see that wear off. I think we'll see him start to play a little bit faster and not be so robotic. You're, I mentioned you're doing radio sideline. You said they kind of threw you to the wolves. This is your first time doing it. You do anything to get out there. But what's it like now that you are away from the game? Hey, I'm all over the place today. I was at BTN this morning. They got me on radio here today. But hey, it's great to be back inside the stadium. I have a lot of great memories from playing here. And just being here today, feeling this atmosphere, feeling that energy, uh, that's why it's one of the best places in the country. Well, you, we appreciate you joining us again today. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. So Matt McGloin talking about Sean Clifford. You saw Sean Clifford trying to stay warm over there on the bench. He's about to get the football back. That Idaho offense, three total yards in this game and zero first downs. Coffey continues his low line drive punts. K.J. Hamler continues his explosiveness in the return game. As he takes it to the 46, that's where Penn State will start their next drive. Clemson, Ohio, Ohio State. State. We were Georgia? contemplating Georgia. That was who we thought might be that when you find out. Clifford. Outside, Justin Shorter. Coaches, as we said earlier, are very high on Justin Shorter and Daniel George, who both redshirted last year. They think they can play big roles in this offense. I like the rhythm that Sean Clifford is in right there. Just catch, look at your guy. You have Nash bailing. Nice throw and catch. Easy. Fake to Hamler, and then it's Clifford up the middle. So again, he shows those legs, and he gets it to Idaho's 41. Pickup of six. Anytime KJ Hamler goes in motion, you have a fake jet sweep there. The defense is going to key on him. Good read by Clifford to take it up the middle. 
movement on the line. Offside, defense number 10, five yard penalty, first down. That's Coleman Johnson, the defensive end, just a true freshman from Fayetteville, Arkansas. As we were talking to Idaho defensive coordinator Mike Bresky, he was saying that out of the 21 players they have on defense, 12 are brand new for the first time this fall camp. And when you're constantly getting transfers in over and over to help give you depth and add guys, it's got to be a challenge as a defensive coordinator to figure out what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses. Tough task for any coach. And all in all, especially since Penn State's had good field position, they've done a pretty admirable job here. It's been that Penn State defense that has really been the story of the game. Clifford, hit as he throws for the end zone. Oh boy, wide open, KJ Hamler. Touchdown, Penn State. Six yard pass, he just had to loft it up there. Yeah, what I love about Sean Clifford here, he keeps his eyes downfield when he scrambles and steps up in the pocket. KJ Hamler, nobody within 10 yards of him, but a good job by Sean Clifford keeping his eyes to avoid the rush downfield. Boy, the safety Tyrese Deadman had two in the area and he went with the wrong guy and left Hamler all alone. So we saw two rushing touchdowns, and now the first passing touchdown of the season. Sean Clifford to K.J. Hamler. Touchdown and no interceptions for Sean Clifford. And Hamler's done his thing. A couple of nice punt returns in a 16-yard run. Now the 36-yard touchdown catch. We've also found out that Jordan Stout is really good at kicking the football off. He just keeps Gosh, booting yes. it through the back of the right end zone. The back. Well, when Tommy Stevens transferred, Sean Clifford in a team meeting said, he stood up, said, guys, I got this. There will not be a step down in the quarterback position. He said he's very confident, and he's showing that so far. To be a sophomore captain at Penn State University, that's a heck of an accomplishment. That's one of the greatest things of any football player's career is being named captain by your peers. And to be a sophomore and get it, that means that you are an elite leader. And the coaches back that up. They say that ever since he has won the job, he could not have been more impressive. Pressure from the backside. Good throw there. Richardson connecting with Jeff Cotton. Right around the first down marker. Elise has more on that Clifford and KJ Hamler relationship. I do, and also going off what you guys were saying, you know, Sean Clifford has really loosened up down here. After that Second touchdown to KJ Hamler, you can just tell smiles and the way he's communicating and walking down here. But also, you know, KJ Hamler is one of his best friends. Clifford was the first person Hamler called when he committed to Penn State. And that relationship is going to prove fruitful as this season goes on. Andre Carter Andre swallowed up in the carry. backfield. That's a loss of one, so that'll make it third and two. James, Idaho's offense still has not reached its own 40-yard line. It just shows you how stingy this Penn State defense is. They're going to try to be stingy once more. Incomplete, boy. Holding on to his helmet, Jesse Lucetta said, I should have had an interception, maybe a pick six. And what a break by Jesse Lucetta. They are so high on him. James Franklin saying that his future is so bright. Watch the break. He reads the route, jumps it. That would have been six, right through the hands. He's gonna, right now I guarantee that play is running through his mind. You always remember the plays you don't make. That one's gonna haunt him when he puts his head on his pillow tonight. Yeah, he thought he had it. Would have been the first interception of the sophomore's career, but not to be. That one got tipped at the line. And then Candler tracking it down. He's headed in the wrong direction. And trying to get it back to the 25, but he's going to be tackled just short of there. Kate Coffey. 
trying to get it over the arm that time, but he could not. Jonathan Sutherland with a partial block. Michigan at Michigan State. Under the lights in East Lansing. Clifford connecting with Fryermuth. And Pat Fryermuth does the rest. So they missed earlier throwing it to him when he was open, but that time he shows what he can do. Yeah, Fryermuth's going to come across the line of scrimmage here across the ball. And once that defender commits thinking Clifford's going to run, he just drops it over his head. Nice job. Great awareness by Sean Clifford reading off Trey Walker there, getting the ball to Fryermuth. Fryermuth 25 yards there for last year's freshman All-American tight end. This time a deep high arcing ball, but a little too far intended for the sophomore Jahan Dotson. It looked like some confusion on where the route was supposed to go. Clifford leading more up towards the goalpost. Dotson cut the route a little flatter. That's something that you'll work through as the season goes on, but that's why timing of a wideout and a quarterback is so important. Flags fly. Going to go against Idaho. Offside. Defense is number 55. Five yard penalty. Second down. Nose tackle Rashawn Crawford, the guilty party there at 300 pounds. That one drives coaches nuts, Brandon, because you're right over the football. We always say, key the football. Don't listen to anything, just key that football. When you're right over top of it, that's one of those. You don't have an excuse for the coach when you go to the sideline. So it makes it second and five. That's the fourth pre-snap penalty against Idaho in this game. Clifford. Ooh, in and out of the hands of Journey Brown. That's one the running back should have had, and he knows it. Yeah, he was looking for yardage upfield. He knew there was nobody around him. Trying to think about where the defender was going to come from before he looked it in. You see him turn his head, trying to look upfield. Exactly right. He was searching for that first down marker before he had it. Third and five for Sean Clifford. A little too high in the direction of Dan Jacinta. Coverage by Lloyd Hightower, their best cover corner. By the way, you're going to hear a lot of that name, Dan Jacinta. He's the former track sprinter here at Penn State, who James Franklin said could be the surprise of the Big Ten Conference this year. He's got an awesome story, recruited away from the football team as he walked on for track, goes to track, misses football, comes back. He was the one that earned the scholarship in the spring game in a very cool moment when he caught the touchdown pass. But you're right, so he could be the breakout surprise of the whole conference. That's the first time here that Penn State has punted in this football game. And a fair catch around the 15. Blake Gillikin finally broke a sweat. Let's welcome back in Elise Mittaker. I was just listening in to defensive line head coach Sean Spencer and what he had to say, and he was telling his guys that with this bigger quarterback in for Idaho, Colton Richardson, we have to do a good job when he scrambles to make sure we tackle him, do a good job suffocating, keep coming. And when he throws it, put your hands up. He looked at Adisa Isaac, said, you're going to have a pick this game. Can you catch? He said, yeah, I can. We'll see if he gets the opportunity. No opportunity there. Good throw, and then down the sideline goes Cotton. You don't want to give Jeff Cotton room to run. 38-yard connection and the first first down of the game for Idaho. Well, look up top. Brent Pry is going to send the corner here, and a great job by Richardson noticing it, getting it out quick. A bad angle there by Sutherland, and he goes up the sideline. Cotton. Showing off some of that speed, but good recognition by Colton Richardson. By far the biggest play of the game for Idaho, and now Andre Carter trying to switch directions. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Brandon, there is some speed on that Penn State defense. Watch the blue jerseys fly to the football. This is team defense. One guy misses, gross model misses, it doesn't matter. Look at the speed, the hats converging on the ball carrier. Ellis Brooks getting there first. James Franklin was saying he was going to get the same amount of reps as Jan Johnson. They're really high on Ellis Brooks. 
missed tackle that time. Coming over the top was Brandon Smith. But eventually brought down, so third and six. Smith tries to swing that arm to get the ball out. Doesn't secure the tackle. A talented true freshman that said you're going to see him on special teams, but also getting reps on defense. 6'3", 240, good looking freshman. And keep in mind, just like last year, that four game redshirt rule still applies. So a freshman like Brandon Smith can play today in three more games and still keep a year of eligibility. Richardson dragged down. Shaka Tony. No flag for a horse collar. They say it was clean. A loss of six and the fifth Penn State sack of the game. You see him bending. Looks like he grabs the jersey. That's a strong grip. When you're able to bend and you have somebody leaning on you, you're able to hold on. That's a big man that you're holding on to with one hand. But you see the pure pass rush ability. You talk to these coaches, and they say that is a pure pass rusher right there. Very talented cerebral football player. The five sacks. Now for that Penn State defense is finally Idaho is going to back the Nittany Lions up inside the 10 off the 44 yard punt. But the sacks the last four years have just been piling up for the Nittany Lions James. Yeah they have four straight seasons of 40 plus sacks. It's the first time in program history and there's two schools that are pretty successful that are only ahead of them and that's Alabama and Clemson. And so when you think about talented defenses that are living in the backfield getting to the quarterback I think it's nice to mention that Penn State's been up there. For the last four seasons. Last year, their 47 sacks were the most since 99. You already got five. They're well on their way. Yeah, they are well on their way. It's the first time in school history, by the way, that they've had four straight years of over 40. Now let's take a look at the house they built by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. These are the shoes that Sean Clifford's trying to fill. Yeah, we mentioned in the open all the records that he has here at Penn State, the most important. The top one, the wins. Football's about winning. He was a winner. A lot of coaches respected Trace McSorley, a fierce competitor. That's what Sean Clifford is. He's a fierce competitor. He's also a great leader. Now will his production match that of the guy that came before him? Open out left is Dotson. First down out near the 20. For more on that quarterback situation, here's Elise. Yeah, I talked to Sean Clifford about what he learned from Trace McSorley, and gosh, he said so much. But number one, he said preparation. He told me how to focus each day. And some words he took away so that Trace always said, let it fly. He says, I just go out there and play like I'm in sixth or seventh grade. That's where I want to be. <laughs> That's when you didn't have any worries. Around the edge, a lot of room to go for Devin Ford. 30, 20. True freshman from Stafford, Virginia. Offensive coordinator Ricky Ronnie said that Devin Ford has quick feet. He finds a lane and then he goes. Well, he went. West side, folks. West side, folks. Let's go. West side. West side. To make it 33 to nothing, and now the extra point to make it 34 to nothing. Penn State. 30 second timeout. Back in a moment. Businesses that spend more time picking the right partner will reap the rewards. At Ram Commercial, we consider every detail for our ProMaster and ProMaster City work vans. Because like you, we know it's the little things that make the biggest difference. That's how you go from surviving to thriving. Now, competitive commercial van owners or lessees are eligible for these incentives on Ram ProMaster and ProMaster City. And yes, it was a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance as the freshman shows off the wheels. You 
see here. He gives it. And once he's past that first level, you mentioned Ricky Ronnie mentioning his great feet, his great ball skills. It looks like he has great speed as well. Able to take that one all the way to the house. And I want you to pay attention to this. This is a true RPO read. And his ability there for Sean Clifford to make the right read, realize that the slant wasn't there, give it to the tailback, let him work. Ford did the rest. That's now three touchdowns at 20 yards or more. Diagnose this last one for us. I uh, will. So the RPO, Shorter's going to run a little slant here. And watch his effort. Keep his eyes on him the whole time. It's the little things in football I love to point out. He realizes, oh, I didn't get the ball. I'm not going to pout. I'm going to bust my tail and go and cut off the only defender that maybe had a chance to catch Ford. That's what it's all about. I guarantee that Coach Franklin is going to pull that clip up because those are the little things that matter in football games. Who knows if he would have caught him? Probably not, but it's the details, the little things. And that's great teamwork. He's not pouting. He didn't get the slant. Every wideout wants the ball, right? Instead, he's going to go block for his teammate. And those are two freshmen working in tandem. Andre Carter. Now, the same result for Idaho's rushing game. Just nothing there around the line of scrimmage. And off to number 22, Carter. Little game on the play. Second game. After the stop by the mid-line, number 28, Jason Wood. Idaho minus 25 rushing yards. This time, at least something positive out to the 29. I mentioned that Michigan State game yesterday against Tulsa. They held Tulsa to minus 73 rushing yards. I've literally never heard of a stat like that before, and as a record for Michigan State. And here today, Penn State doing a heck of a job. And I know some of that in college football has to do with sacks. You get five sacks, that's going to contribute to that number. But as you said, even when Idaho has run the football on true running plays, there hasn't been anything. That front, not just the, the talented DNs we've mentioned, but those deep tackles have played extremely well. The junior quarterback trying to set up a little screen. Forget about it. Castro Fields coming up to clean it up, but there were a lot of blue jerseys in the vicinity. Garrett Taylor was the first to have the read there. He shot the play. He has to shoot the gap. He misses. 30 second charge timeout, Penn State. Their second. So that'll bring up a fourth and seven as Penn State takes a timeout. On an all new season of Fansville by Dr. Pepper. There's a storm coming. Did you hear that? Someone's in the house. All of our Dr. Pepper's gone. Hey, you got the wrong fan! Oh, are you seeing another grill? It's just a snack. That's it, Crow. <laughs> These turnovers are killing us! Your husband's gone. For the season? No. I'm transferring to tech. Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. About time you showed up. Stay tuned for the Halftime Report presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Mike Hall, Glenn Mason, and Joshua Perry will be along from our Chicago studio to get you caught up on everything in the Big Ten today. A lot of week one action. That's going to go bouncing by Hamler and turn out to be a pretty good result for Idaho. And a first half that has been all Indy Lions, a 15th ranked team in the land with a 34 to nothing advantage. You see some flashes out of this Penn State offense when they've had the football. Obviously the last play by four was a big run. But Ricky Ronnie was talking about Sean Clifford. He just wanted to see him operate the offense. He wants to see the football go where it's supposed to on each and every play. He said he doesn't have to throw a touchdown pass every time he throws a football. I think he's operated pretty well. There's been some throws, Brandon, that have gone high. Part of that is nerves. We've heard Matt Cloyne talk about that. Sometimes you get nerves out here in your first really big start. He'll calm down and we'll see if he can get in rhythm throughout the rest of this half. Chance to try to put one more touchdown drive together. Great read there as he picks up the first down, a gain of 12. Well, it's important that Penn State keeps this as part of their offense because what it does is it holds the defense honest. You have to be able to respect that and respect his feet. You can't just assume he's going to give it every single time. See eight explosive plays for Penn State so far in this game. 
And there's another one. Daniel George, redshirt freshman who had two catches last year, but kept the red shirt, gets his first catch of 2019. And yeah, one of those catches last year was the school record 95-yard touchdown from Sean Clifford. Nice touch there on the corner route. Good job by George securing it. Over the middle, caught Hamler. Just shy of the 20. So Clifford really getting in a rhythm. This is good to see. I mean, he has great patience. He waits for Hamler to clear the linebacker, Walker. Delivers a nice touch. That's just good timing, good rhythm. Being early with the throw, he knew that he was going to come behind the linebacker there. Good anticipation by Clifford. And a great look. Our crew in midseason form, led by Jim Ressler and Pat O'Connor, producer and director. Inside of two minutes in the second quarter. Going for the end zone, Hamler, yep, second of the game for the red shirt sophomore, K.J. Hamler. And his family, they approve. Well, that's a nice read. Once he sees Hightower squat on the right side of your screen, he realizes he has all the width of the field to work with. He can throw it away from Jalen Hoover. And when you give K.J. Hamler all that space, that's pitch and catch right there. Yeah, I don't think you want to give him any space. So there was a 20-yard play, a 22-yard play, and then that 21-yard touchdown pass in succession. What an efficient drive for Sean Clifford at Penn State. We think you would really shine in the AFLAC program. AFLAC? Coach Saban, we have health insurance. Did health insurance pay for everything? No. We still have bills. AFLAC gives you money directly to help with those. AFLAC. And your deductibles, knee brace, whatever you choose. AFLAC sounds like a winner. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. We try. Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Get to know us at AFLAC.com. K.J. Hamler, four offensive touches, all four of them for 15 or more yards, two of them touchdown receptions. And remember, he was the king of big plays last year. I mean, he had 18 yards per reception, which was second in the league to Terry McLaurin of Ohio State. So expect more big plays from number one in Navy. So here was the trivia question from earlier brought to you by our friends at AFLAC about Penn State being ranked for 41 consecutive weeks, which four schools have a longer active streak, survey says. Bama, Ohio State, Clemson, and oh, Oklahoma. Gosh. That's the one we missed. Gosh, I feel like that's a huge fail. That's a fail on us. That is a fail. How do we forget the we, Sooners? We guessed Georgia, but Oklahoma, yep. I blame you. You played college football. I did. So I blame you. A long time ago. <laughs> what a big hit. Coming up, Trent Gordon. What a collision. They said they know about their top two corners. They're looking for a third. Trent Gordon putting his name in the hat. Well, he reads it. He goes and he fires. He chops the legs out of the wide receiver. Nice job. Top two corners, by the way, John Reed, Tariq Castro Fields. Richardson's in trouble. And another sack in the backfield. This one back at the 21. Robert Windsor and Yitor Gross Matos combining. Six first half sacks for that Penn State defense. That front is going to be a problem to deal with for every team that Penn State 30 faces. 30-second turns timeout, Penn State. They're third. Penn State takes a 30-second timeout. We will, too. Team All Big Ten last year was Windsor. We expect to hear them all season long for the Nittany Lions. So third and 14 here. Penn State took that last timeout. 
No one was looking. Nick Romano was running downfield. Richardson threw it behind him. And that's the offensive story of the first half in a nutshell for Idaho. And here with the way the punts have gone for Idaho, you have to think K.J. Hamler's going to have an opportunity to pick it up on a bounce. Probably end up in Vandal territory. It'll be interesting, interesting to see what Penn State decides to do with just 53 seconds on the clock. Hamler with the two touchdown catches, but this time nowhere to go. Before the action kicks off on Saturday's all season, don't forget to join Dave, Jerry, Howard, and Michelle to get the party started. BTN tailgate, 10 a.m. Eastern on Saturdays, presented by Geico on BTN and the Fox Sports app. It's a great scene over there this morning. Yeah, they did a wonderful job. Great crowd. You were on. You didn't screw it up. Well, you know what? Kudos. It's hard. It's hard to screw it up when you got <laughs> Jerry and Howard and Dave. They do a tremendous job, and what a great scene it was, and a great crowd. Good turnout. Yeah, it really was an excellent turnout over there today. And Penn State has been enjoying a very successful first half. They'll try to put one more feather in their cap. Clifford pumps and now tucks and runs. Elusive. All the way down to the 35. Well, I think the question of whether or not he can run has been answered. Absolutely. He, he does a nice job in the open field one-on-one -on -one with Trey Walker, the Mike linebacker for Idaho, and puts a little move on him and gets a big gain. Big gain of 23 yards that time. This time back to the air. Looking for Fryermuth. Yep, there's a flag. No doubt about it. Lloyd Hightower ran right in to Pat Fryermuth. And that's unfortunate because if Lloyd Hightower would have just spotted the football, he would have had an interception. Pass interference. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. When the wide receiver switched, he expected both defenders to stay with their man. If Hightower just pays attention to where the football is, he might have an interception. Instead, he's way early, and understandably so. Sean Clifford is looking for that flag. Not the first half that Paul Petrino was hoping for, 52-year-old head coach. Trying to get Idaho back from a struggling season last year at 4-7. and seven. And A tough first half here at Beaver Stadium. As Clifford just going to throw this one away with 10 seconds left in the second quarter. One guy we haven't seen on that Penn State defense in this first half is Cam Brown, but he will come back for the third quarter because he was suspended for targeting in the bowl game. Which I think is absolutely ridiculous that a kid can play in a bowl game, get targeting, he has to sit out. This is a senior linebacker, a kid who has put in a lot of sweat into this program, a lot of passion, a lot of energy, and yet he has to sit his senior opening day, the first half. That just crushes you for the kid. Over the middle for Fryermuth incomplete. Then he took a big pop. And he is down around the goal line. Yeah, he took a shot helmet to helmet from the safety. Watch this here. Yes, Satchel Escalante, you're exactly right. But no flag came in. If anything, for precautionary reasons, you're not putting Fryermuth back in this football game. When you suffer a shot like that, even without of speculating, that is something that you want to keep him on the sidelines as a precaution the rest of the football game. And I think this is one they're going to take another peek at. And not the case. Instead, they're just going to go forward with play as Pat Fryermuth continues to try to shake it off. James Franklin hasn't shaken it off yet. 38-yard field goal for Jake Penninger. No problem. Kicking game remains perfect for the Nittany Lions. And really, the first half, pretty perfect for the Nittany Lions. 44 to nothing as we hit intermission. That's the end of the first half. 
10 drives for Penn State, eight scores. Stay tuned for the halftime report presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Mike Glenn and Joshua, they'll be along from Chicago. All Nittany Lions through third. As they have a 44 to nothing advantage, and we welcome back in our Elise Miniker. I talked to head coach James Franklin, and he told me that Sean Clifford, he thought after those first two drives, he really settled down. He said, sure, he missed a couple of throws early, but now he's managing the game well, and they're protecting the football. And as for that defense, he goes, besides one explosive play, they're playing well. Coach Petrino says we have to stay on the field. The punt team killed us. So we have to get first downs one play at a time and play tough. Now the punt game was certainly a deficiency for Idaho in that first half, but as she said, that Penn State defense, which will get Cam Brown back in this second half, another linebacker, they were spectacular. I mean, Idaho had 12 of their 17 rushes go for zero or negative yards. And that's simply outstanding. And look, I know that Penn State has superior talent to Idaho, but still you have to execute. And so that says a lot about the character and the focus of those players to be that locked in. A lot of times, and I know from experience, when you play a lesser opponent, it's very easy to think, you know what, we can just show up, walk out there, and we're going to beat this team. That's not the case. You see these guys locked in. They're taking pride in their studying. They're taking pride in their film work. And they're playing a really good, really clean football game defensively. So there probably wasn't a whole lot that James Franklin had to say or adjust at halftime, right? No, and I guarantee one guy who probably said something was Cam Brown because he's juiced up to get back out there. <laughs> I promise you that. Senior year, you're ready to go. And a guy who's a leader, obviously a lot was made about his speech to his team after the bowl game. He can't wait to get on that field. He had had to sit out that first half because of the targeting penalty in the bowl game. So he's raring and ready to go, but Penn State will go on offense first. Short kick and an awkward fair catch, but a fair catch nonetheless. It'll bring the ball out to the 25. Penn State fortunate that Journey Brown and Jesse Lucetta didn't collide there. <laughs> Yeah, they almost collided. So what's the goal here for Sean Clifford? I'm not going to say you're, you're taking your foot off the gas, but it's a little bit different here in the third quarter, right? Well, this is the first time that in a real game situation, they've got to go into halftime and say, hey, this is what the defense is giving us. Here's some tweaks we're going to do and see if your quarterback, your young quarterback, can actually adjust on the fly. Well, not necessary for this game, but it's going to help them against better competition. He'll start with a pass out of the backfield, Journey Brown. Journey Brown showing how elusive he can be, somehow staying in bounds and picking up 12 yards. Let's see the footwork along the sideline, see if he did stay in. Yep, great body control. Good effort there. You see Nick Bauer straining on the block. He had a touchdown run earlier. Now he's starting the second half with back-to-back -back catches. Across the 50, ooh, he almost broke that free. Inside the 45, 19 yards there for Journey Brown. And a nice job. Look at the receivers up top blocking for him. K.J. Hamler, Jahan Dotson doing a nice job straining. That's one of the things that Ricky Ronnie said about K.J. is that you always see on film him putting his face in there blocking and straining on blocks for his teammates. It's good stuff. Off the play fake. Clifford all kinds of time, and he's going deep for Hamler. Hamler adjusted and holding it in. First and goal. Thirty-six yards here for Hamler. There's nothing that Tyrese Denman could do there. When that ball is that underthrown, the receiver has a huge advantage because he's looking back for it. The safety there, trying to look at his man. Nice job by Hamler adjusting and looking that one in. Hamler now 115 receiving yards on four catches. I mentioned he was second in the league last year in yards per reception. Well, he's tracking towards first right now. Journey Brown left side. Tried to stretch it out, but he's going to be short. He got the football to the pylon. Let's see what that the left foot or the right knee foots in. Knees down. Nice job by the official seeing that. Spot the ball right around the two. 
One more time, Jerry Brown. Second touchdown of the game for Jerry Brown. Right up the gut. And Penn State has already hit the 50 point mark. Brandon, that's just what you want to see. We talked about making slight adjustments, but when you come back out, are my guys still focused? Right? Can they lead a drive down, get on the board? Great execution by the Penn State offense. Obviously, KJ Hamler with the nice adjustment on the catch, able to punch it in from the low red zone. Five plays, 75 yards, just 143 off the clock. Well, if you want to dominate week one, this is how you do it. They're right in the script. Peter, if I ever attempt anything like Stop. that. He spent eight years in the NFL. I spent two years in Pee Wee. Yeah, doesn't mean I'm not stiff. <laughs> By the way, our stat guru and math wizard Ethan Cooperson says that Penn State is on a 96 point pace right now. And Cam Brown is just saying, I'm not worried about our offensive points. I'm just ready to play some defense. Yeah, I'll tell you who's not worried right now. It's defensive coordinator Brent Pride. He's worried about his defense coming out with no energy. Cam Brown's going to make sure he's bringing it right now. You can hear him yelling, getting his guys going. Well, it's hard to believe that with the first half they put on defensively that they were missing one of their best pieces <laughs> in Cam Brown. Idaho's drive chart in the first half, they went turnover on downs and then all punts, and here's an interception. John Reed with a pick. The fifth-year senior with a sixth interception of his career, and it sets Penn State up first and goal. John Reed seen a lot of football. Look at him just jump. That's a miscommunication there. Mason Petrino had to be expecting the wide receiver to run a comeback. Reed's not mad at him. He'll take the gift. 27 career starts. He's seen a lot of ball. Very smart football player. It's good to see him healthy. And we are going to have a new quarterback. Will Levis is coming into the game. So Sean Clifford to the sideline. And now the backup Levis fakes the give, keeps it. Ooh, that might have been a face mask. But no flag comes in. So getting an early look at the red shirt freshman, Will Levis. And he tries to cut back here on Trey Walker. And it looks like he just gets that right arm around the shoulder pad. Yeah, that was clean. Just a nice tackle. How about that, Clifford? One drive into the second half, and he can put the ball cap on him. Watch. Levis is the guy with the biggest body out of any of the quarterbacks. He's got a good arm. He tried to show it there, but it's incomplete in front of Nick Bowers, tight end. Good ball placement that time by Levis. He put it right where his tight end, Bowers, could get it wasn't able to bring it in. You got to throw it away from the defender there on the corner route. He did just that. Takes off on the delayed run. It's down inside the five to the three. It took a pretty good pop there at the end by Charles Acano. But as I said, he's strong. 6'3", 230. He pops right back up. So Penn State keeping the offense out there, fourth and goal. Hand off, the freshman, Noah Kane slipping through. Sean Clifford approves as the onslaught continues. Really solid push by the offensive line. You see number 74 there, Steven Gonzalez climbing. 
What I love about Sean Clifford watching him, even when he's on the field and there on the sideline, he gets so excited, almost more so when his buddies make a play. Long run, something like that. He's the first guy down to celebrate with his teammates. Great leadership. Good sign of a leader indeed. So Will Levis, after the interception, orchestrates a touchdown drive that finishes with Noah Kane dancing into the end zone. Back by committee. Yeah, they weren't lying to us, were they? I mean, it was really, each one of them has done a nice job. And I think we've seen display today all of their different skill sets. And Ricky Ronnie was really adamant about how they each have something different they bring to the table. And maybe the most well-rounded is Ricky Slade, but all of them have impressed me today. And if you look at the touchdowns in totality for the Nittany Lions, seven scores by five different players, so they have spread the wealth. And that total yards number down there, that kind of tells the story. 487 to 47. Beautiful crowd. On a beautiful day, really. Temperatures have been so pleasant. Clear skies and a 58 to nothing game. 104,000 on hand to see it. Colt Richardson with a handoff to Andre Carter, able to fall forward for two. Tackle made by Shane Simmons, who was injured all last year. People don't realize he was competing with Gross Mottos for the starting job before he got that injury. When you have a guy like that that's that talented, it's good to see him because that's just going to add depth to an already stacked position. Trying to keep it on the ground again. After their last drive ended with that interception. Just one yard, so that'll bring up third and seven. Idaho 0 for 10, attempting third down conversions here today. Timeout Vandals. 30 second charge timeout, Idaho, their first. Just a 30 second timeout. Idaho running into a bit of a buzzsaw. Look, they were an FBS team from the mid-90s until 2017. Dropped down to FCS last year, James, and they thought, okay, well, let's get some momentum, but they were just four and seven and struggling here today. Yeah, and they had a good bowl victory in the Idaho Potato Bowl over Colorado State, but they had already announced the move to FCS, so it kind of hurts recruiting when you're trying to think, hey, do I want to go to Idaho and be an FBS program? Well, they're going to be FCS. Do I want to play at that? Now that they're finally there, Coach Petrino senses that they have a little bit more momentum when it comes to recruiting. But nonetheless, there were expectations. Anytime a program goes from FBS to FCS, you think, oh, naturally, they're going to have a little better football players. That wasn't the case. And they're trying to find their new identity back in the big sky. Richardson. Batted away, great defense, Keaton Ellis. That's that freshman corner you talked about, James. Local kid, State College High School, just three miles south of here. Yeah, and he was in for spring, and he impressed from day one. A kid that just, they love his attitude, they love his work ethic. And Brent Pry telling us that he's gonna see a lot of time he's going to contribute, and a candidate for that third corner. It's funny, all these guys kind of get their starting jobs by first being that third DB, right? John Reed did, Tariq Castro Fields did. They've all spent time at that third DB, and there's a little bit of competition going for it now. Now Idaho 0 for 11 on third down conversions. Sean Clifford's day is over, but he was really good while he was out there. Yeah, he was, and, and Ricky Ronnie wanted to see him make the right decisions, wanted to see him operate the offense well, and he did that. The first touchdown pass to Hamler, great eyes downfield. Second one here, puts it only where his guy can get it wide open. KJ Hamler, such a special talent. Sean Clifford, I thought his running, his ability to improv is what had impressed me because that's what Trace brought a lot of. And I know we don't want to keep comparing him to Trace, but when you have the all-time winningest quarterback here, for good reason, you're going to look back. Swinging it outside to Devin Ford. Ricky Ronnie continues to do what he said he was going to, and that's try to get those running backs involved in the passing game.
thought it was funny talking to Ricky Ronnie yesterday saying that when he plays his kids in video games, he starts game planning against, <laughs> against his son. I said, that's a competitive coach right there. 39-year-old, such a family man, talked about the balance that he has of spending time with his kids, even during the season, how dedicated he is to that. Short pass here. Cam Sullivan Brown hit right after he grabbed it. So that'll bring up third and ten. I'm sure Sean Clifford is thinking to himself, I wish I was still out there. That was one of the hardest things about some early non-conference football games. When you're a competitor, you never want to come off that football field. The arguments, I used to get it with my D coordinator, linebacker coach Luke Fickle, over taking me out at any point, were heated. So you just want to be out there with your guys. You want to, you've been practicing against your own team for so long, you want to get out there and play against another team. You get comfortable. Hit as he throws and slipping was Dan Chisina. So he didn't have a chance to catch the pass from Will Levis. There was pressure here from Coyote Rufi. So a rarity as Penn State will punt. Just the second time today that they have used punter Blake Gilligan. Almost had it blocked. No flag for roughing. Coleman Johnson almost got a hand on it. Idaho will try to break that goose egg when we get back. It's been all Nittany Lion. My favorite road atmosphere is playing here at Beaver Stadium. Especially when you get that famed whiteout at night. It's hard to beat that atmosphere. This is just Idaho's fourth play all game in Penn State territory. Petrino on the run and able to find his target, Mr. Cock, out inside the 30. Really nice patience there by Mason Petrino. They're trying to run a wheel route out the left side of the, of the formation. It was covered by Penn State. Kept his eyes downfield, was able to find Cotton for a nice game. Cotton, the leading receiver, four catches, 68 yards. That's just the second first down of the game for Idaho. And a surprise snap. And a flag comes in as well. Petrino was walking away. Start offense number eight. Five yard penalty, first down. So, either way, it would have been a negative play. This will back them up five yards. They're very fortunate to get that football back. A little miscommunication. The center, Connor Verba, he's very experienced. 21st career start. So, back them up first and 15. To the outside, short gain, just not a whole lot there. Nick Romano, the freshman who they really like, says he's the best pass catcher of the running backs. He only got three yards that time. Yeah, I was the Idaho 5A player of the year last year in high school. And their coaching staff really feels that they have more speed at that position than they have in the past. It's tough to see it against this really fast Penn State defense. Though. Yeah. Penn State is all speed. Like James Franklin said, this is by far the fastest team I've had, and he's had some pretty fast teams. Yeah, he has, and, and that's what the game of football is all about. You've got to have really tough guys on both lines of scrimmage. That's still where the game is won and lost a lot of time. And then your speed has to be evident on every single skill position. It can't just be a couple guys. You'll win a couple games with a couple guys, but in order to win championships, you need it everywhere. The Penn State shutout starting to be in jeopardy a little bit here. Third down and three. 
flag. It looked like Romano leaned a little bit on his tailback position. False start, offense number five. Five yard penalty, third down. That's now six pre-snap penalties for the Vandals. And those are the things that are gonna drive Coach Petrino nuts. And, and it's the it's the mental mistakes. And look at him right here, flinch in the backfield. Just trying to release a little early, jump the snap count. But it's the, it's the mental mistakes that are false starts or maybe aligned wrong offensively versus the aggressive penalties like a holding. Those are the things that frustrate coaches and keep them up at night. Petrino's going to take off. Didn't work very well. Now Penn State. Brandon Smith called his name earlier, the true freshman making a nice play. Loss of two. Yeah, that's the reason why he was a five-star coming out of high school. Nice job working on the center. Nice little hand swipe. Makes a nice, solid tackle in his first game action as a Nittany Lion. So instead of a long field goal, they go for it here on fourth and ten. Petrino on the run, incomplete, no flag. They call the defense clean. D.J. Brown knocking it up and giving Penn State the football back with inside of six minutes. The Vandals getting manhandled here, and Penn State gets the football back after a turnover on downs. And Noah Kane with the carry as we go to Mike Hall for an American Family Insurance Studio update. Western have an awfully difficult time doing anything offensively against Stanford. T.J. Green has them finally driving after Hunter Johnson started the game. He gets sacked, fumbles, loses the ball, and has to be carted off the field. Noah Kane on the carry. Well, not good news there. As Penn State just goes back to the ground, picks up a first down here. As we approach five minutes left in the third. Backup quarterback Will Levis again handing it off. As Penn State just working the clock, Noah Kane getting a lot of action. Five yards that carry. Pat Fryermuth talked about him being a freshman All-American. We saw him take a big shot in the second quarter. He has not returned, as you speculated. There's just no reason to bring him back. Yeah, when you see a lot of times the helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit and then the player lay down on the turf, that's just that's a given. And especially with the score where it was when it occurred, there's no reason to put him at risk of any further injury to what you assume is his head area. We have no confirmation of that, but common sense would tell you that's what it is. Elise, do you have any more information? I'm trying to get confirmation, but to James' point, he has just been standing on the sideline. I've been watching him this whole second half, and he's really just talking to his teammates, towel around his neck. So, again, I am trying to get confirmation on that, but uh, that's what he's been doing so far. As Penn State continues to move Noah it on King the ground. On the carry. Well, look, Pat Fryermuth is great, and they feel that they've got great production behind him and Zach Koontz, Nick Bowers. A tight end is really a spot where Ricky Ronnie thinks they can take advantage this year. Yeah, absolutely, and, and they have skill everywhere. Fryer moves so well-rounded. He can block. He's obviously a great last year, the second-leading receiver on his team, and a, and a guy that when we called the game last year here against Michigan State, he was brought up by Ricky Ronnie about how talented of a tight end he was, and he's got three talented guys behind him. And a heavy dose of Noah Kane. First down, Penn State. And Pat Fryermuth in the offseason, and he did not say this in a cocky way. You want a guy to say this. He said, I really think that I can be the best tight end in the country. Oh, that's exactly what you want out of your tight end. You want almost every player that's starting for you to think that way. Athletes have to have a, a kind of an alter ego, a mentality, uh, and, and a confidence that enables them to play fast. He can certainly do that. Will Levis completing it to the outside. Weston Carr, his first catch for the fifth year grad student. As James Franklin digging past that two deep into the three deep. This 
time it's the other freshman, not Noah Kane, Devin Ford catching it out of the backfield for a short game. And the sticks move again. So far this drive, you've seen a lot of running the football and a lot of short passes, probably with the intention to keep the clock running. You have a massive lead, you're trying to get guys reps, but you also want to make sure we get out of here without any injuries in a game that is out of hand. Levis dropped for a loss. Tonight, the final drive is going to get you caught up on everything that happened around the conference today. Presented by Auto Owners Insurance, the final drive coming your way 11 p.m. Eastern right here on BTN. So a loss of a yard on the last play, second and 11. Levis dumps it off. Boy, a little bit of a circus catch. Weston Carr, who we just saw a moment ago, bobbled it, but was able to gather. You can see Penn State working at a slower pace than what we saw in the first half, trying to eat up as much as that play clock as possible before snapping the football. Yeah, those first couple drives, they were get up to the line and go, but that has changed with this 58-0 score. Levis batted down. Getting a hand on it, Charles Acano. That was, a, that was the same angle route that they ran earlier in the football game. That was a huge gain. This time, it was batted down. Good awareness by Akano to get his hands up as he's in a little hand fight right there. And on fourth down, instead of the field goal, we saw Penn State do this earlier in the half. James Franklin keeps the offense on the field. A lot of movement. And Levis to throw it, wide open. First down, Zach Koontz, that's one of those tight ends I talked about. And the drive will stay alive. And that is a big human being. Koontz is 6'7", 243 pounds, redshirt freshman. That's a massive target that if I were a quarterback, I'd like to throw it his way, because you know that catch radius is pretty big. You got Fryer Muth at 6'5", 260. Bowers 6'4", 260. Devin Ford churning the legs down to the four. And you mentioned it earlier. You talked with Coach Ronnie with those big tight ends. About more 12 personnel, the two tight end sets. We'll see as the season goes how much those factor into this offense. But right that's now, the the that's going to wind us down to the end of quarter number three. James Frank of the Big Ten Conference. Time for the fourth quarter. Penn State looking to add to that huge lead. Throw behind, but still caught and taken into the end zone. Well, Levis, not the most accurate pass, but Brenton Strange, the freshman tight end, somehow able to corral it and score it. And congratulations, young freshman. You're into the end zone for the first time in your college career. The play fake, he comes behind the line of scrimmage. It's hard for the defender to track him behind the offensive line. And a nice, easy throw for Will Levis for six. And also for Will Levis, his first career touchdown pass. Extra point up and good. And Penn State adds on to that big lead. Six different Nittany Lions to score a touchdown in this game. Curious which player is going to try to keep that football. <laughs> yeah, who gets <laughs> the it? The first touchdown pass or the first touchdown reception? I think that one belongs to Strange. I don't know. Will Levis a little bit behind him. That was a heck of a catch. And we talked about those tight ends. I didn't even mention Britton Strange, but <laughs> I think that they've got another good one in him. Very talented receiving tight end. 6'3, 233 on a West Virginia. 
A lot of talent in that room. And that's the way, that's what recruiting comes in. James Franklin and his staff has done a tremendous job recruiting four straight years of the top 20 class, second in the Big Ten the last two years. They have talent all over this roster. And iron truly does sharpen iron. Remember when I was playing at Ohio State, whenever they recruited a really good linebacker, you don't think it made me try a little bit harder yeah. over the summer? Because you get asked by every single fan, well, what about the new kid? You know, and so whether you're a talented linebacker here at Penn State, whether you're Cam Brown, you're being asked about Brandon Smith, I'm sure he gets asked a ton about Micah Parsons. It just helps you train that much harder. It's healthy competition. It brings better football out of you because of the young guys that they bring in. And now let's look at our quarterback comparison presented by Unleaded 88. Sean Clifford, 14 to 23, 282 touchdowns in this game. And for Mason Petrino, he didn't really have much chance in the pocket. No, he didn't. He, he didn't have much time to throw the football. That one interception went for uh, John Reed, was able to jump it in front of him. And when you look at Sean Clifford, the impressive thing is no interceptions. That's a really clean. He wasn't trying to force too much. He took what the Vandals gave him. Pretty clean game. And it's the backup, Colton Richardson, again for this drop. Andre Carter has been the back that's gotten the most carries, the red shirt freshman. Idaho, they said that they want to have their starting quarterback figured out by the fourth game when Big Sky play starts. They're going to give Petrino and Richardson supposedly an equal amount of shots. Petrino got most of the drives here so far in this game. Don't forget later tonight under the lights, 7.30 from Ann Arbor against Middle Tennessee State for the Wolverines. All presented by Taco Bell under the lights. And that defense of Penn State swarming again just when Idaho thought they might pick up a first down, they go backwards. All smiles over there on the Penn State bench. Idaho now 0 for 13 on third down tries in this game as yet again they will punt it away. I guarantee every single starting defensive football player over there is telling the young guys that are rotating in. Dropped it but was able to jump back on it as Mac Hippenhammer. He could not get it. Idaho is going to get good field position to try to get rid of that zero. David Eppinger was the one to jump on it for the Vandals. And right as, as I was about to say, every defensive player, the starters are saying, hey, preserve the shutout. You have a muffed punt. You give Idaho really good field position at the 25-yard line with an opportunity to get points. You take pride as a defensive football player in the shutout and preserving it, and you want those guys that are subbing in for you to uphold that effort that you put in earlier in the football game. James Franklin not very happy. Mac Hippenhammer can return punts because he's an outfielder on the Penn State baseball team, but he misjudged that one. Now a timeout taken. We'll step aside on the air tonight for the broadcast of the Michigan Middle Tennessee State game. And I see the big story there with Matt Millen and the date that that will air in later in September. Idaho has it first and ten here after the turnover. Nice pass and a good catch. They'll have it first and goal. Mason Petrino able to hook up with Nick Romano. 24-yard gain, second biggest play of the day for the Vandals. You said it, but you know how much that shutout means to this Penn State defense. Now they got to bow their necks a little bit here. Absolutely, you can see on the sideline guys like Gross Mottos, even from up here, they're standing close to coach. And I can guarantee you they're yelling things out there. Preserve the shot, don't let them in. Big challenge for the Lions defense right now. Play fake, rolling. Touchdown, Idaho. Their first score of the season. Logan Kendall. 
And the Idaho fans finally have a little something to cheer about. But it's all window dressing at this point. You can see the play action fake right here. Petrino buys enough time to get the football to his fullback. They're still competing. They're enjoying this. The biggest stadium they've played at as a program. So Logan Kendall with the first two-time captain, though, as a punter. That's pretty impressive. Is 4.0 good? Uh, I wouldn't know, but I've heard rumors that it is, yes. I know that's what you got at Penn State, or Ohio State. How dare I misrepresent you. 12.35 left in a 65-7 game, so Penn State can no longer get the shutout, and now Will Levis will come back out here to try to work some of that clock. Wendy's stat of the game is just as lopsided as the score, 25-3 in the first down category. That's a really impressive performance by this Penn State defense. I mean, three first downs, that is, that's some good stuff. Really good focus. They were, they were prepared well by the coordinator, Brent Pry, and they executed. Levis hesitating and then taking off, lowering his shoulder. How about that? Will Levis using that 230-pound frame for a few extra yards and a first down. He's here on the quarterback draw. He took it. He tries to deliver it there to Escalante. Nice job staying on his feet. This time he does hand it off to Devin Ford. But Will Levis, well, he thought he would be in that third spot in the quarterback and pecking order this year. But when Tommy Stevens transferred, opportunity for him to be the backup now to Sean Clifford. Justin Weller with a first down reception. Brandon, these reps are really important because I know it's cliche, but... But how, what can we get out of him when he's in the football game if we ever need him in that situation? Good pass here. Down near the 40-yard line, Weston Carr. He's had three catches in the second half. And a moment ago, you saw Michael Schuster, another quarterback with a red hat on the sideline of Penn State. But right now, the focus is on getting Will Levis some game experience. Fakes the handoff. A good decision by Levis. And inside the 35 to the 33. And Penn State is now up over 600 yards of offense in this game. Makes a good read here. Making the pull. And lowers the shoulder again on Escalante. Those two trying to go after it. Not very often you see a quarterback lowering the shoulder. Yeah, you're exactly right. Both times right in to the chest of the safety, Satchel Escalante. First down, Devin Ford. A well-oiled machine from start until now with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter for Penn State. Well, Coach Ricky Ronnie was saying, the first thing he said about Ford, great feet, right? You saw it right there. His ability to pick him up and put him down in tight spaces on that run. Really impressive by the true freshman from Virginia. And with that last run of 11 yards, he now has a 100-yard game on the ground. Trying to add to that total. Here he will. Boy, that was impressive.
Virginia, number five running back in this 2019 class, and he's at 107 yards with that touchdown run. This time of the pass game. Rushing attack, it's been good for the Nittany Lions. Yes, it has. Every single one of these four guys that we mentioned has a touchdown, and they've contributed, whether it was Ricky Slade, whether it was Devin Ford here breaking the longest touchdown run of the day for the Nittany Lions, or Noah Kane. They've all gotten their hands on the football, and they've all gotten into the end zone. Great future for that running back room, and I'm curious as this season goes along, will it be a collective 1,500, 18 yard round rushing unit, or will it be one guy puts in 1,000 or multiple? Another freshman, Noah Kane, there. You have five rushing touchdowns total in this game for Penn State. It is different than having the bell cow. Obviously, Saquon Barkley, and then last year, Miles Sanders, both of those guys doing their thing in the NFL. But to some degree, this is kind of how the game is shifting. Wes on to the bell cow and more running back by committing. It is, and it's a huge blessing for Ricky Ronnie because he said they're all so similar that you don't just have one guy in and think, oh, gosh, I have to run maybe just passes here or maybe just a power-type football plays. Instead, you can run the whole playbook, playbook with all four of them. Up the middle, push forward and into the end zone. It was close. They're saying touchdown, and finally the signal comes in. Noah Kane with his second score of the game, and the second score of his young career. Well, it was a late signal. Let's see if he got in. Really a nice, tough run to get in the end zone. Absorbs a couple hits. It's a little help. You can't see the football, but they ruled it a touchdown on the field. I think he somehow got in. What a tough run by Noah Kane. Coaches were saying he has a knack for finding edges. You see it there. He's able to kind of slice, and he knows how to attack the edge of a defender. Ability to fall forward, fell forward for a touchdown. Now three different Penn State players have two touchdowns. Hamler, Brown, and Kane. Just a touchdown run showing off his speed. There's a reason to be excited if you're a Penn State fan for all four of them to see what each of them can bring week in, week out. All right, let's go to Mike Hall for an American Family Insurance Studio update. All right, Brandon and James, the update from the farm is a mixed bag. Here's Hunter Johnson throwing a pick in his own territory to Stanford with his team down 10, but the ensuing field goal attempt was partially blocked and hit the upright. So about to enter the fourth quarter, Wildcats still with no points in the game, down by 10. A defensive battle between those two academic institutions. I bet there's a lot of 4.0 GPAs <laughs> in that game. <laughs> I was going to say. Idaho slipping forward here across the 25. Inside of eight minutes left in this game. Good game, as we said, for Sean Clifford, the quarterback. At least you talked to his parents, did you not? I did. They've been sitting about 20 feet away from him all game. So I asked Kelly, his mom, what she thought. She goes, it's surreal. He's just living his dream. And his dad, John, said it's such a proud moment. And yes, as you can imagine, as his dad, he's been very nervous this entire game. Sean has been watching them. He said that he doesn't think his dad was sitting down the whole time. And his mom was probably going crazy. Well, now they can sit down and relax. Their son did a great job. And He's done for the day. He has been for quite some time. Can't imagine the feeling of being a parent and watching your kid get to live out their dreams. So fulfilling for them. They have to be really proud, and it's going to be exciting times going forward for that family. Richardson going down. The 31-yard line. Daniel Joseph that time making the play for Penn State. Really a nice job. Nice little bend. That's all it was. It was a nice little rip. Good lean that time by Daniel Joseph. Able to turn that corner and finish on the big QB. On fourth and four, a punt. As 
as Idaho still has not converted the third down. They're 0 of 14 in this game. Hippenhammer with his second fumble of the game, but it is picked up by Jaquan Brisker, his teammate, who was Johnny on the spot. That's the one blemish as Hippenhammer struggling a little bit to hang on to the football, but it will be Penn State possession when we return. Fall in love with thousands of brands with Prime Wardrobe. I have no service. Let's just ask someone. Excuse me, sir? Can you tell us the best way to get to Nashville? Ah, uh, Nashville. Well, that's easy. Take a ride up there and you'll see a store. You go in there and buy yourself a five-hour energy. You could be on your way to Nashville. Five Hour Energy wants to send you to Nashville. Go backstage at the Opry, see the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum, and meet Dirks Bentley. Just buy any Five Hour Energy product, snap a picture of your receipt, and send it in. You could be just a Five Hour Energy away from Music City. Mike Hall here. We'll get you back out to State College in a second, but want to remind you we're nowhere near done because there's a big game still coming up here in that Michigan is starting their season under the lights, something Jim Harbaugh and the program have never done before. They have arrived at the stadium less than an hour to go until they open up their year against Middle Tennessee. We will come back when this game you're watching comes to a close, do a little post-game show here from James Franklin, and then get you ready for Michigan opening their season. For now, back out to Brandon. All right, thanks, Mike. Now, James, I know you went to Ohio State, so you got to be careful here, but what do you think of Michigan this year? Well, there's a ton of talent. I think there's a lot of excitement for good reason. Shea Patterson and Josh Gaddis, that marriage, how's it going to be with the new offensive coordinator? Will Coach Harbaugh let him take over and keep control of the play calling? And can Don Brown replace some really talented defensive players? Rashawn Gary, Chase Winovich, Devin Bush, the most impactful. Big challenge replacing those type of players, but they have good coaches up there. It's going to be interesting to see that new look offense with Coach Gaddis. Well, Penn State. Also on that side of the Big Ten has been really dominant here in this one. 72 to 7 as we see Michael Schuster take over at quarterback. The red shirt junior. So we saw Sean Clifford and Will Levis and now Schuster. Taking the shotgun snap. Handing it off. Also the first couple carries of the game for Nick Yuri, Red shirt junior who rarely sees action and he picks up the first down. There's all three quarterbacks that have played in this ball game. I love the fact that Clifford has a headset on because that means he's listening. He's still in tune mentally to what the play calls are. He can go through those mental reps. I had coaches telling me all the time in my career, the brain doesn't know the difference between a physical and a mental rep. So if you keep imagining what you're going through when the other guys are in there, that'll help you get a little more mental action of that play that can help you out in the future. Ready? Back to Nick Yuri. He's had a few nice carries here. Out of the 32. Don't forget, Mike Glenn and Joshua will, will be along with the State Farm post game. They'll get you caught up on everything happening in the Big Ten today when we are done here in about four and a half minutes. Welcome to the team, the Joshua Perry. Yes. Really bright young man. They have been busy today. They're going to be busy all season long back there in Chicago. This time Schuster opted to keep it and he gets taken down and then a penalty as the flag is thrown. Personal foul targeting defense number 45. The play is under further review. That's Coyote Rufi the red shirt junior. So we had a targeting call in the first play of the game against Penn State that got overturned. And now watch this one, number 45. It looked like he was leading with his helmet there, which is what is going to get him, what they're trying to get him for targeting. When you lower that and use it as the striking force, as the spear, the tip of the spear there, 
they're going to get you for that. And Rufai was a transfer from Boise State. Three seasons there. 19 games. Two-time letter winner. And here's the verbiage. Again, all elements of targeting this year must be confirmed. There's no option for saying that the call stands. But I'm with you. You talk all the time about lowering and having the crown of the helmet be the first point of contact, and it appears that was the case here. And it seemed like, and I'm all for finishing to, to the you know, echo of the whistle, but when you have a player that's defenseless like that, there's other ways to go about it. And I understand this looked in the past, that wasn't a penalty, but you got to change. You got to change with the times, you got to change your techniques. So I think this will be. It was. Well, they're still looking at it. Uh, Dean Blandino, what did you think? Yeah, well, I think you've got the quarterback wrapped up. He's defenseless. But the key is if you watch the defensive player, he's going to drop his head and initiate contact with the crown of the helmet. That's what the rule is trying to take out. And then we're going to get the announcement here. But I would I would expect this call to be confirmed. Yeah, so we're all in agreement on that. And here is Tom Stapleton. After review, the ruling on the field of targeting is confirmed. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that's a big penalty for them going forward. They play Central Michigan next week. And Coyote Rufi, redshirt junior. The targeting call is a dead ball foul. So it's from the end of the run, 15 yards, automatic first down. He's an important number 45 piece in defensive end. Qualified from the game. This is a dead ball foul because the quarterback was. So Rufi is out of the game, as you said, the Boise State transfer. And he will miss the first half of next week's game against Central Michigan. And what I love about the change in the rule is that they presume almost innocence when they go back to the replay, right? They kind of re-officiate the call when they're looking at it. That time confirmed, made the right call in my opinion. Another carry for Yuri. Turning in a nice little drive here. First down carry, 10 yards. I'll tell you what, these are special moments for these young men, especially for the guys on the sideline. They're watching these players that practice so hard. They give their heart and soul to the program, do a lot of scout team reps. And when they get to actually get live reps in Beaver Stadium, that means a lot, not just to that young man, but to his teammates, because they know the work that they've put in. 661 yards of offense for Penn State. They're looking to add to that number once again with Yuri, just a couple this time as he takes it down to the eight. James Franklin hasn't had much to worry about in this one. They jumped out to a 20 to nothing lead in what felt like no time, and they've cruised ever since. Up punt, the fumble. You'll talk about maybe some plays that you can find where maybe guys were open defensively, right? That didn't hurt them this game, but it could in the future. Or offensively, maybe you missed a throw here or there or a block that doesn't show up against Idaho, but it could down the line with future opponents. And that's what these games are for. There's a ton of tape, and there's going to be a ton to teach off of. Next week, they'll host Buffalo and then Pittsburgh before having a bye and then into Big Ten play. How about Nick Moore? Did he get in? Yes. What an effort by Nick Yuri. His first touchdown as a Nittany Lion, and he becomes the fifth Penn State running back to hit pay dirt today. And that is a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance, if I've ever seen one. I just love the effort. He was not going to be denied at that goal line. What I loved was his team's reaction. You can see it from up here in the press box. Look at Sean Clifford. Just what I was talking about. These guys get psyched when those hardworking players that put all this effort and love and passion into the program, he gets a touchdown. Boy, he earned it. That drive was all about Nick Yuri. 79 points on the board for Penn State. We talked a lot about their defense. Good football players that were kind of quote unquote recruited away, you know, from a from program and and then you get a rivalry game against Pitt, another step up in competition, all of them at home.
to nice kind of ease into your football season before conference play. And after the bye week, that first conference game for Penn State will be at Maryland. It'll be the first time that James Franklin takes his team away from Beaver Stadium. Certainly has to like the 79 point performance We're here to start things off in 2019. And the, the chicken made the appearance, so <laughs> we're, we're good there. Check that off your list. We haven't seen Jeff Cotton in a while. He had some activity in the first half. There's a reception for big number 88. It was fun when we were visiting with Coach Franklin yesterday. And you ask him about maybe national expectations. Say, hey, do you like? I asked him, do you like kind of laying in the weeds a little bit nationally, or you know, do you like being kind of the, the the team that's expected to win the Big Ten East? And he said, at Penn State, when you're the head coach, they expect you to win a national championship every single year. <laughs> Those expectations don't change. And you can tell that he loves that challenge. Black coming in. Yeah, he took us back to his early time here. You remember the first two seasons, and of course, coming off all those sanctions, they won seven games and seven games, and they were really struggling. And then those two 11 win fall. seasons came Face in. Mask. Yep. Defense number 10. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. So a defensive penalty. That looks more like a horse collar, but regardless, it would have been a penalty, and that's the true freshman linebacker, Lance Dixon, another Idaho kid. The clock start on the snap. Another five-star linebacker waiting in the wings, getting some time, taking advantage of that four-game redshirt rule. Ooh, a big hit there as Keon Martinez just got popped by Brandon Smith, speaking of freshman linebackers. Oh, we heard that all the way up here. That is same foot, same shoulder. Just seven seconds second left in the game. Time out, Idaho, their third. And Idaho's going to take a timeout. So one more break. We'll wrap it up here shortly. One under par on a hole is a birdie. That's what I'm talking about. And a score of two under par is? Big birdie. No, it's not that. It's a turkey vulture. R Ricky, well, I'm sorry, what turkey vulture. Oh, that's turkey. Oh, all right. Let's go. I'll follow you. Go, 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 go. Otherwise known as sand trap scavengers. Seen it, covered it. September 29th, 2017. At Farmers Insurance, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. James Franklin talking to Brandon Smith, who just made that big tackle. But anytime you see a tackle like that, you just hold and look around for the flags. The previous play is under review for targeting. And they're going to look at that previous play, says Tom Stapleton, for targeting. It seemed like that took quite a while. Yeah, they had the time while we were away, but opted not to, and now they've been buzzed to take a peek at it here. Again, this is the targeting rule in the NCAA handbook. Saw his teammate in the background, CJ Thorpe, fall down to his knees at that hit. I mean, it was a big pop. The only question is, will it cost him? Dean, have you gotten a good look at this? What do you think? Yeah, we're, we're looking at it here in the studio, and it is a big hit. But After he the shoulder, there's no there's targeting no on the contact. Play. Second down. And yep. I think that's the correct call. It's close, but there's no contact with the crown of the helmet, and so it's not targeting because the player getting hit was a runner, not a defenseless player. Yeah, that's the good distinction. Thank you, Dean. And that's exactly what Tom Stapleton just said. So 
No targeting, and he will not have to miss the game next week against Buffalo. Once that player turns up field and is able to see the hit coming, now you could argue that he was stumbling a little bit, couldn't really change his body control, but however, a clean hit and a forceful one. Likely the final play of the game. And the clock hit zeros as that is ruled incomplete, and that will do it. Penn State starts off the 2019 season by scoring the most points in their program since 1991 with a 79-7 drubbing of the Idaho Vandals. So James Franklin's offense was good, his defense was good, I mean just all around a solid performance. You have to be happy with it. You're able to get a big